Hey there, team. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have a little pre pre game questions on the screen for you. Feel free to pop these in the chat. Where are you in the book writing process right now? And what is your book or book idea about? I'd love to see some answers. We're going to get started here in about two minutes. Still waiting for some folks to come in. Thank you for being early. You know the old saying, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. If you're late, don't bother to come. Anyway, great to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please do type in the question box, where are you in the book writing process? And you could be nowhere. You could, well, I'm, I'm not writing a book right now. And that's totally cool too. Uh, or if you are thinking about your first or next book, what is that book about? What is that book idea? Let's see. I should probably open the question box so I can see what you're typing in there. There we go. Detailed outline and rough marketing plan. I had several published books writing another one now. Practical ways to meditate. Totally fantastic. Method of leadership. Change target audience, discarded initial draft, ready to rewrite with a new avatar in mind. That's cool. Women and money. Book complete for a few years now. Nelson, Nelson, Nelson. Oh my gosh. Nelson is one of our rock star, amazing, early, early, early graduates of the book marketing and book writing workshop. He has a totally fantastic book out there called The Creative Storm that follows our sort of instant bestseller template. Nelson, I'm not sure if we called it that back when um, we were working together, but uh, super excited to see you here. Uh, just started, finished, and ready for proofing about career development for employees for companies to improve retention and help employees enjoy their work. Awesome. And, and you know, Francis, if they don't enjoy their work, they can become entrepreneurs like you and me. That's the fun part. All right, well, <laughs> let's get started. These are all great answers, by the way. So thank you for playing along with our pre-party shenanigans. I think, are we recording? Are we not recording? I think we are recording, right? So uh, you guys see the little red light there saying this session is being recorded. I think I think we have it recording. Or Rachel, do you see if we're recording? Okay, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Uh, cool. All right. For some reason, I had I had this turned off about automatically record when we start, but sometimes GoToWebinar doesn't listen to me. It's amazing. I don't know why. It's weird. So, all right, let's get rolling here, people. This is one of my favorite, favorite topics. Uh, if you've been around the block with me, we've been doing um, various versions. This is, of course, the latest and greatest updated 2024 version, but we've been doing some version of this, I would say since 2013, so 11 years, and a lot has changed, of course. A lot, a lot has changed in the last 11 years between book marketing, book writing, book publishing, book distribution, eBooks, Kindle, audio, obviously the whole AI world, chat GPT, et cetera. So we're gonna have some fun today. Oops, first we have to show you the title slide though, because I made the title slide, hate to fly right by it. There it is, my friends. Welcome to Business Book Domination. How to write, promote, and profit from a nonfiction business book and get the reviews, sales, clients, and recognition you deserve. That sounds like fun. Sounds amazing. Let's do this. You are in the right place. If you are thinking about writing your first or next business book and you want to make it happen fast. As a B2B consultant, 
business coach, corporate trainer, or speaker, you want a more secure and profitable author expert platform. And we're going to lay that out today about what that looks like, all of the different products and services and companion tools that are in the world of your book and could be derived from your book or added onto your book. You want to get it right the first time and you want to give your book the audience endorsements, reviews, sales, and recognition it deserves. If that's you, go ahead and type me in the question box. Type me. Yeah, that, that kind of sounds good, David Newman. That kind of sounds good. That's why I'm here. That's what I want. Just like an opera. There's the question box. Me, 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 me. Awesome. Very nice. If you're in any of those buckets, by the way, we will definitely have something to help you on today's masterclass. The game plan, self-publishing versus traditional, 2024 update, writing shortcuts, tools, and tactics that you need to know to put together a really world-class book without tearing out your hair. Write a book that they will buy, read, buy in bulk, and recommend, review and recommend. Monetizing your entire book and platform. I talked about that a moment ago. That's one of our coming attractions here today. And some next steps to help you make it happen. If you are ready, if you are eager, if you are serious, if you are committed, we're going to have some cool stuff to talk about. And of course, massive Q&A at the end, like we always do. If you hang till the end, we have two really cool gifts for you. One is my special report called 27 Ways Not to Get Burned, Building Your Business Around Your Book. The second resource is my seven-step book publishing cheat sheet. And then surprise appearance by something crazy good that I am convinced you will love. Very quick poll in the chat. Four options, just type in a number one, two, or three, or four. Number one, if you've not written anything yet or not published anything yet, you're here because you wanna write your first book, please type a one. If you're in the middle of writing your first book, type a two. If your book is already published, type a three. And if you're working on your next book, so you already have one or more books out in the marketplace, you are geared up and ready to write the next one, please type a four. Either a one, a two, a three, or a four. We'll take the temperature of who's in the room. We can customize on the fly a little bit based on what you're interested in and where you're at in your book, writing, publishing, marketing, and selling journey. Excellent. Good. Pretty even spread. Pretty even spread. That's awesome. Let me share with you a little bit of the backstory of how I came to this publishing expertise. And of course, like any other expertise that at least I happen to have, I did it by doing major screw up after major screw up after major screw up after major, major screw up. That's how I learn. That's how I learn. So you don't have to. <laughs> Let let me take the bullet. Let let me make all the mistakes and fall into all the manhole covers, hit all the dead ends, hit all the brick walls, and then show you a better, faster, smarter way. As with everything, that was my book marketing journey. So let's go through it. 2004, I'd been in business for a couple years all over the map. I was bored and broke. Title of this slide is Bored and Broke. And uh, I had, what I mean is no focus, no expertise, no clients. And I believed all the hype. You know, the hype is this lady here pointing her finger going, you need a book. You have to have a book. You can't be a serious consultant. You can't be a serious speaker. You can't be a serious coach unless you have a book. You have to write a book. You, 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 Nelson, you, Art, you, Cheryl, you, you have to write a book. Well, I wrote a book. My first try was called Relish, The Highly Authorized Guide to Life. 
My first try I call extreme self-publishing. <laughs> why, why is it extreme? Because I literally did everything myself. I designed the book cover in case you couldn't tell. I know you think that's a professional artist that I paid a couple thousand dollars, but it's not. Uh, that is a David Newman designed book cover. I did the layout. I bought my ISBN number. I had to figure out what a barcode was for the back of a book. Today, it's simple. 2004, good luck figuring out how to make your own barcode. And I had to figure out how to get it printed and distributed and all of these other crazy things. Um, this screenshot here, I think, speaks volumes. It says, out of print, limited availability, meaning yeah, you ain't getting it. It's a collector's item. It is extinct, like the elephants. Uh, all right, so this is the worst selling book ever. Worst selling book ever. To the best of my knowledge, there's about 10 million books on Amazon. 10 million. How this got a sales rank of 16 million, I don't know. But clearly, it is the worst selling book ever of all time. Uh, if you can be 16 million out of 10 million in the running, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, that was the story. By the way, Amazon, notice it says Amazon bestsellers rank. I, I want to pause here for a moment because this is important. Look at the screen. It says Amazon bestsellers rank. Number 16 million, 669, 315. This looks to me like I'm an Amazon bestseller. Didn't say what number, right? Is it number one? Mm -mm, no. Is it number five, 10, 20? No. It's number 16 million. But technically, and by the way, I never did this. And just to be clear, I never did this. I could go to Staples or my favorite office supply store. I could get a gold seal that says Amazon bestseller, and I could slap it on the cover of this book that I think sold maybe three copies total. I bought two, and I think my mom bought one. So please do not believe the Amazon bestseller hype. I'm gonna show you the mechanics of a genuine Amazon bestseller, not only number one, but top 20 for 39 months continuously after publication, but that is not this. And anytime someone is promising you a done for you Amazon bestseller campaign, run the other way. There is a dirty sweat sock that could be a number one Amazon bestseller. Maybe some of you have heard that story, seen that blog post that's made the rounds a few years ago. Someone did in fact put a dirty sweat sock on Amazon as an Amazon seller, not as a book, but as an Amazon item. And they did get a number one ranking for their dirty single sweat sock. It wasn't even a pair of sweat socks. It was a single dirty sweat sock. Became an Amazon number one bestseller and they could legitimately market their Amazon number one bestseller status. So everything in that arena is rigged. Bestseller and a random Tuesday night at 2 a.m. is not gonna sell books. Top 20 in your category for 39 months straight, continuously after publication, that's gonna sell books. That's gonna sell books and bring you lots and lots of credibility, clients, leads, revenue, reviews, authority, and uh, impact. So just wanna take a pause here and tell you not to drink the Amazon bestseller Kool-Aid site unseen. I'm gonna show you the behind the scenes mechanism of exactly how that works how many books you need to sell, what it really looks like for serious, including charts and graphs, because I can't be serious if I don't have charts and graphs, am I right? Can't be serious if I don't have charts and graphs. Gotta have the charts and graphs, people. All right, mistakes early on, no audience. Did not build an audience before writing the book. Figure, oh, hey, you know, Amazon has millions of website visitors. I'll just put the book on Amazon, people will find it, and I'll sell thousands and thousands and thousands of copies. Got to build the audience before you write the book. I wrote a blog post many, many years ago called, you need to build the tribe before you build the tent. So build the followers. Don't just build the tent and hope people will come under it. You got to build the tribe and then build a tent around the tribe, which is your books, your courses, your coaching, 
your consulting, your facilitation, your memberships, your VIP days, all of those things. Mistake number two is I had no sales plan for the book. I figure, oh, hey, you know, I'll, I'll just put the book out. Uh, and when I say no sales plan, I mean no sales plan whatsoever. No online sales plan, no offline sales plan, no plan to put the book in the hands of prospects, no plan to put the book in the hands of current clients, no plan to generate a referral and review campaign. I mean, no, no sales strategy whatsoever behind the book. Today, of course, we will work with our clients and we do the sales strategy before we even write a single word of the book with them. Number three, again, overarching, no strategy, how to integrate the book into the entire business. We're going to talk a little bit later about complete integration, that everything you do with the book supports your business and everything you do with your business supports the book. So this is about really no integration strategy where the book grows the business, the business grows the book sales, and everything is in a cohesive, self-supporting, interconnected ecosystem. Didn't have that either. And again, we work with our clients during our VIP days, during our mentoring. We put that integration strategy in place before writing or ghostwriting a single word with our clients. So very, very important. Uh, again, school of hard knocks, learned it the hard way. You don't have to. And the team and I now do this for folks and it's, it's way better. It's way easier. It's way smarter. And the books are way more successful. Now, how did I get so smart? How did I get so smart? Well, after my experiments in extreme self-publishing, I started to study the pros and I started to look at what people do before they write a book, when they write the book, when they launch the book and what they do days and weeks and months and years after the book is launched. And then I got a little bit obsessive. I got a little bit nutty. I did hundreds of hours of research. I interviewed over 50 authors and experts. Some of them were on my podcast. Some of them were friends. Some of them were um, other authors who invited me to be part of their book launch. And I'm always happy to do that. You've seen me recommend books. And I only recommend books that I truly love and have read and believe in. But every one of those was a learning opportunity. I, I must have done by now at least participated in 50 other authors book promotions. So I get to see behind the scenes what they're doing, how they're doing it. Obviously with my three books, uh, my three real books, we'll talk about that in a minute. There was nine total, but there's three real ones. With my own books, it was very, very important that I get other people's help. So yes, I was being altruistic. I was being a nice guy. I was promoting other marketing authors and sales authors and social media authors and leadership authors and all kinds of authors if i really loved their book and believed in in them and their work similarly when m my three opportunities came with do it marketing and do it speaking and do it selling i called in those favors in return i called in those chips in return we'll talk about all of that a little bit later but i tapped into their secrets and methods I took the best of what I learned and I implemented like a crazy person. I tweaked, I tested, I put my own spin on it. And then clients started asking for help in this area. And this is my, my first serious book marketing launch platform building client, my friend Ford Myers, who just actually sold his business. Uh, this year, he sold his business, very successful. But what we did with him is we put together all the pieces. I wrote the book proposal. I brokered his relationship with an agent. We got the book deal. We negotiated the $10,000 advance. This was in, oh, I want to say 2007. This was many, many moons ago. This was in 2007. I believe the book's copyright is 2008. So we did a um, seminar. Uh, developed a seminar based on 
the book, we developed a corporate workshop based on the book that Ford delivered for $8,000 a day. And again, this is 2007. 2007 numbers, 8K a day, that was some serious money. We also built out a manual or a companion toolkit called the Ultimate Career Guide. The book sold for 20 bucks because most books sell for between 20 and 30 bucks today. But manuals, companion tools, guides, resources can sell for hundreds, hundreds or even thousands of dollars. So we did a $97 digital only version. We did a $197 hard copy with binders and CDs that I mentioned it was 2007. Did I mention it was 2007, my friends? Audio CDs, awesome. We got bags and bags and bags of audio CDs <laughs> back from the, uh, the CD manufacturer. That was fun. $10,000 certification program where Ford would then certify other career consultants in his methodology, training, and tools that were in the book and in the guide. And then he himself was able to raise his career coaching to a premium price point. Again, 2007, eight, nine, that's the kind of numbers we're talking here. $6,000 for a three month program, $9,000 for a six month program. Uh, most career coaches at the time, and unfortunately still today, most career coaches are charging 150 bucks an hour. And he's like, no, no, it's 6K for a 90 day program or it's 9K for a six month program. And his effective rate is between three and $500 an hour, right? Three and $500 an hour, and it's much less labor intensive. Um, and he's not getting paid hourly, he's getting paid up front. He's getting that 6K check up front. He's getting the 9K check up front because no one's saying, can we just pay hourly? Why? Because he built the platform, he built the authority, he built the thought leadership around the book and around the business. That's the integration that we're gonna talk about. So having this deeply, deeply embedded in your business, this is not a, here's what people say that make me nuts. You guys wanna hear what, what makes me nuts? Just type in nuts. Type in nuts in the chat if you want a little David Newman nuts rant. Okay, cool. <laughs> the people have spoken. Here's the phrase I never want you to use. I have this business and we work with this kind of client and we do this kind of work and we generate this kind of outcome, dot, dot, dot. And I also wrote a book. The book is not a PS to your business. The book is not a, and I also wrote this little book, like a side dish. It's like, oh, you know, we have this beautiful seven course meal and oh yeah, here's the Brussels sprouts on the side. My friends, your book is not the Brussels sprouts. Your book is the big, fat, juicy, 25 pound turkey smack in the middle of the table. Everything is built around the ideas and the methodology and the thought leadership in the book. The book is not the side dish. The book is the main dish that makes the side dishes possible and profitable. You're welcome. That makes me nuts. When people say, oh, and I, I also wrote a book, like it's a PS or it's a second class citizen. That, that kind of thinking will make every book you write a complete waste of time. Complete waste of time, effort, energy, investment, money, everything. Don't do that. Don't do, and I also wrote a book. If the book is not strategically integrated into your business before you've written a word, and possibly a year or more before the book ever sees the light of day. Let me repeat that. If the book is not integrated into your business thinking and your business strategy before a single word is written and before the book ever sees the light of day, that book is much less likely to be successful. That book is much less likely to be successful. It's not about the quality of your ideas. It's not about the quality of your writing. It's about the quality of how well you've integrated the methodology, training, tools, ideas, and thought leadership in the book into every other fiber of your business, every other offer, every other piece of marketing, every other sales conversation, everything that you offer, your integrated product suite, your good, better, best, your coaching, your consulting, your training, your speaking, 
your workshops, your online courses, your VIP days, all of those things stem from and are connected to the thought leadership that's baked into your book. Now, you, you might say, oh, gosh, man, that's a lot of work. It's not a lot of work if you think it through or if you have a thinking partner like me to think it through with you and for you. Where people hit a wall is they write the book and then they ask themselves, now what, when it comes to the business? I want you to answer all those questions about the business integration, because that's going to help us figure out exactly what kind of book to write and what kind of hooks need to go into the book that drive back to your business and what kind of offers are at the back of the book where it's like, hey, if you like the book, here's the next step. And then the next step after that, and then the next step after that, right? Bigger, better, deeper, more expensive, more valuable offers. If you look in the back of any of my three books, and I hope that you have some of my books, if you look in the back of Do It Marketing, you look in the back of Do It Speaking, or you look in the back of Do It Selling, there are three or four pages of, hey, you like the book? Awesome. Here's some free stuff. Here's some low cost stuff. And here's some pretty expensive stuff. So I'm in the book, I'm already figuring out how will these people come into my world? The people that read the book, what is the next best step for them to take? Some of it's going to be free. Some is going to be low cost. Some is going to be medium. Some is going to be our highest level programs. Some is going to be VIP day, six month coaching, 12 month mastermind, become a do it marketing certified consultant, uh, join our elite mastermind for $48,000. I figured all that out before I wrote a single word in the book because Stephen Covey, start with the end in mind. I cannot tell you how many smart people that are on this call, how many smart people just like you and me have written books and they did not have the business end in mind. You know what they had in mind is, boy, I, I hope I finish this book someday. No, con no concept, no conceptual framework or goal of how the book is going to generate hundreds or of thousands or millions of dollars in non-book revenue. I'm just ranting here, guys. I mean, is this valuable? Is this helpful? Give me a, give me a V in the chat if this has been valuable. Uh, we have a lot more content, a lot more training coming up, but I just, I can't stand when people do this the wrong way and then they're not getting the results that they said they wanted because they didn't do the hard thinking and the hard planning that's required. Writing books is easy. By the way, kids, writing books is easy. Hell, marketing books is easy. I know how to do that with my eyes closed. Now, it's the thinking and the integrating that is difficult, that you should put yourself away for a week or at least a couple days, uh, You know, rent a hotel room, do what my friend Steve Shapiro does, go off site, rent a hotel room, go away and think, think, write, brainstorm, capture, figure out the business plan behind the book before you've ever written a single word. Thank you for all the Vs, by the way. Valuable, valuable, valuable. I appreciate it. All right. So we did some extreme self-publishing back in the day, 2004, 2004, 2004. Uh, we did a minor league publisher. I wrote the manager's pocket guide to using consultants for a small outfit called HRD Press. I believe they're still around. I can't guarantee it. And then my three real books, of course, 2013, 2020, and 2023. Tip for the pros, do not write a book with speaking in its title that comes out January of 2020, three months before a global pandemic shuts down anything in the speaking industry or speaking related or even attached to the concept of speaking. No meetings, no events, no training, no conferences, no speaking. Even though the book jacket says very clearly, this is for online, this is for offline, this is for webinars, this is for live streams, this is for podcasts, right? I put speaking in a much bigger box, didn't really matter. Book sift, three months of awesome, strong, fantastic book sales, 100 plus reviews in the first three months, and then crash and burn, crash and burn. Thank you, COVID. Thank you, pandemic. 
So that wasn't such a big success uh, due to circumstances, as they say, beyond my control, beyond my control. We did a great book launch though, and thank God I had those first three months, but man, whoo, March, 2020, forget about it. It's back down in the bargain bin with the 16 million, you know, ranking of 16 million. All right, let's talk about getting it right. This is Amazon Author Central. And um, this is 39 months after publication. Book comes out in June of 2013. This is September of 2016. So you can see that the sales are continuous. And 39 months after publication, it is still in the top 20,000. I'll share what that means here in a moment. But to put that in context, and you can see, by the way, you can see it says 19,000 of over 8 million books, right? Remember, my book was ranked 16 million. It's like, how can a book be ranked 16 million out of 8 million books on Amazon? Beats me, but I managed to break the system because the book was so bad. Anyway. Uh, 20,000 is the top quarter of 1%. That includes all books on Amazon, regardless of category. This is not a trick. This is not a game. This is all books sold on Amazon.com. Top one quarter of 1%, which includes Harry Potter and the Bible. Top one quarter of 1% for 39 months straight. 39 months, three years and three months, if you're keeping track at home. So that was good. Reviews. This screenshot says 271 reviews. The Do It Marketing book now has over 400 reviews. Uh, relentless, relentless perpetual launch. And we'll talk about that. And relentless perpetual asking for reviews. Individual human people that would send me a nice note. Hey, David, I just finished your book. It's totally amazing. I really love the part about blah, 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 blah. I would send them back an immediate reply. That is so kind of you. Would you be awesome enough to copy and paste that comment into a two sentence, five star, positive, poetic Amazon review? That's the template. I sent hundreds of those individually by hand to very nice people who sent me emails or messages or texts or social media posts or social media direct messages. So yes, we got some reviews organically. This is a traditionally published book. So it had wide distribution across all English speaking countries. It was also translated into six languages. We'll talk about that momentarily. But I didn't, I didn't sit on my hands. Every single review counts. That's how you go from zero to 10 reviews, 10 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, 100 to 200, 200 to 271, 271 to 400. That's how you do it. Day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, it never stops. Think about it this way, your book launch never stops. Your book launch never stops. Why? We'll talk about this in a moment. It's the integration piece. The book supports the business. This book that's now 11 years old still brings me leads, clients, sales conversations, and sales. Uh, I'm hearing right now, this week, this, this is a, a perfect example. This week, I heard from someone who says, hey, David, I'm halfway through your Do It Marketing book. I'm like, thank God it was evergreen. Thank God it, it's, it's, it has no... It has no timely component to it. Is it written specifically to be evergreen and timeless? I talk about social media. I talk about no platforms. I talk about video. I talk about no platforms. I talk about positioning, packaging, pricing, strategy, no specific time-bound examples. So it is evergreen content there are people that are still reading this 11-year-old book for the first time this week and this month, and those are good leads, and those are people that might want to come in and buy other things from me, like your readers are going to come in and buy other things from you. Getting it right, number three, 
whole bunch of awards, which is nice. Awards don't necessarily generate book sales, but it's fun to be recognized in that way. And then uh, Change This, which is 800 CEO Read, did manifestos for all three of my books. And that's a big honor. I'm super excited about all three of those, the Do It Marketing Manifesto. There is a Do It Speaking Manifesto, which again, nobody saw because it was part of the launch. All of these are free, by the way. And the Do It Selling Manifesto, a good number of people saw that and are still downloading and enjoying that. Best Small Business Books of 2014. They picked five. I was number three. It's not bad. Only problem is the book came out in 2013, but whatever. <laughs> I guess they did the reviews in uh, in 2014. So it was named Best Small Business Book of 2014, even though the copyright date is in fact 2013. And then, of course, lots and lots of media. Lots of media from big outlets, small outlets, rock stars in my industry, Jeffrey Gittimer's newsletter twice, um, uh, Rain Today, which is a huge professional services selling blog, um, Entrepreneurs Club, Business Locker Room, um, all of these amazing places that were either interviews, articles, or um, uh, features and mentions. So success factors we've talked about so far. Alignment with your expertise is critical. Focus on the book as integral to your business. Have a strategy to sell more books, which I did not early on with my extreme self-publishing misadventures. Many ways to monetize your platform, which we'll talk about. And then you need other people. You need partners, you need endorsers, you need contributors. If you wanna use a contributor or an interview strategy, and you certainly need launch partners. Launch partners are absolutely critical. No one does anything great alone, and you, you will never launch your book successfully without the help of every single person that you know and a whole bunch of people that you do not yet know. But you are going to ask for help, and you are going to ask for favors, and you're going to call in chips, and you are going to reap the karmic benefit of all the good that you've ever done in the world by asking for help when it's time to launch your book. I get it, my friends. I started at zero. I made all the mistakes that I shared with you. None of what we're talking about today is theory or maybes or guesses. I've coached and mentored over 100 authors through the various flavors of uh, programs that we do, including VIP days, book marketing workshop, done for you publishing strategy, all of the things I shared with you about the Ford Myers book and Empire. And this is exactly what I've done to sell 15,000 books and generate over $10 million of coaching, consulting, training, and mastermind revenue in the past six years alone. And my first book came out 11 years ago, so it's probably more like 12 or 13 million, but I wasn't making much money 11 years ago. We've ramped it up, and so now we have a nice multi-seven-figure business going, but $10 million in the past six years combined. It's not 10 million a year, just to be clear. It's 10 million over six years. So I'll let you do the math on that between one, one and a half and two million. So let's break this down. I told you I'd show you the story behind the numbers. We did a pre-launch on April 5th. The book was available for sale on May 22nd. The published date was actually June, but Amazon decides when the books are in the warehouse, they start selling books. So it was May 22nd as a surprise. Anything below Amazon sales rank of 200,000, I consider the bargain bin zone. You're not getting recommended. The algorithm is ignoring you. 200,000 or lower, meaning the number is higher, right? So sales rank 16 million is pretty awful. Sales rank 8 million is pretty bad. Sales rank 3 million is pretty terrible. Anything less than 200,000 is really, really good, meaning it's higher than 200,000. So for a book to stay in the top 20,000, which again is the top one quarter of 1%, that takes some sustained effort. You might say, well, David, how much sustained effort? The chart on the left is what most people experience, right? They, they're on a podcast, they sell three books, and then it goes back in the toilet. They do a webinar, they sell five books, and then it goes back in the toilet. 
What do you need for sustain? So look at the two charts. That's my chart. Never dipped below 200,000 for 36 months. This is a weekly or bi-weekly chart, and we're going up and down like a crazy person. Sell five books, disappear. Sell three books, disappear. Sell two books, disappear. The chart on the right is on an alg um, al algorithmic scale, I think it's called. So if you look over here, uh, each line is proportionally distant based on the value. So you see the sales rank up at the top, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, and then you see the number of copies sold per week goes from one to 10 to 100. So if we want to hit this 20,000, which is where the, the vertical arrow is right next to 10,000, that's 20,000, it's one line away from 10,000. That's how the algorithmic scale works. It's proportionally smaller distance, the higher you go. If you wanna get there, then you need this number of books to be sold each week. And again, if you read the al algorithmic scale now on the left-hand side axis, 10, 20, 30, 40. The answer is 40 copies sold per week. If you can do 40 copies sold per week, you will stay in the top 20,000. In This is the nonfiction business book categories. I have no idea about your horror novel or anything else, but nonfiction business books, that's the world that our clients operate in. That's the world that we operate in. Nonfiction business books, 40 a week is your passport to sustained success. Now you are in the algorithm, you are in the Amazon recommendation engine, the reviews do start to count and to get a critical mass of reviews. My, re my recommendation there, by the way, 30 reviews in 30 days is what you need to prime the uh, review and um, prime the pump with reviews so that the recommendation engine starts to pay attention to your book. Hey, if you like this book, you'll probably like that book. Hey, if you like this other book, you probably want to look at David's book. And that's not sponsored ads. That is organic recommendations that go to every Amazon customer. Some get the emails. Some just have it in the recommended section. People who bought this book also bought that book. People who bought this book also looked at this book. So it starts to pop up organically without you paying a dime in ads. So 40 books a week. What does it take to sell 40 books a week? Well, book launch is the start of the marathon. It's important to prime the pump in the ways that I mentioned. Amazon, Goodreads. Goodreads actually was purchased by Amazon a good number of years ago. And then influencers and bloggers who review books in your niche. We also need to go out as authors and do as much podcasting, live streaming, interviewing, borrowing other people's platforms, guest blogging, being on their podcast, getting interviewed by them in their communities and on their live streams, on their YouTube channel. Social media promotion and engagement, not just promotion, but engaging with people that have read your book or who are interested in your book or were thinking about buying your book. One-way data dumps, one-way broadcasts do not work. If you've ever, and many of you have, because you're, you're um, some of you are the OG David Newman fans, and God bless you, thank you. Uh, if you've seen me launch any of my own books, it is a very interactive, dialogue-based marketing. It's not buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, go away, right? We're talking, we're doing, we're emailing, we're doing launch events, uh, we're doing giveaways, we're doing contests, we're putting together groups on Circle or Kajabi or Facebook, private groups of readers, we're doing, uh, we're doing review competitions, we're doing all kinds of fun things because I want to build a community and a movement around the book. I don't want to be that guy or that gal that says, hey, my new book is out, buy it today. People hate that. How do I know? I, I hate that, right? Uh, I spend 10% uh, of my life being an author. I spend 90% of my life being a reader and a consumer. 
So I know that what doesn't work for me in that 90%, I, I would never want to do to my audience and my readers when I'm putting on the other hat for the 10%. To get media, be the media. You start showcasing, featuring, and highlighting other people, other authors. There's no more generous community than nonfiction business book authors. They support each other. They go to bat for each other. You have to have a posse. You have to have a community of people that you're building genuine relationships with so that you can help them and correspondingly, they want to help you. Let's talk now, we're gonna switch into traditional publishing versus self-publishing. Traditional publishing, I think is less and less relevant today. And I'm a traditionally published author. And so I'm telling you <laughs> that having done it both ways, including extreme self-publishing, hybrid publishing, traditional publishing, all the publishing, traditional publishing is less valuable. Let's go through why. For a very small number of readers, maybe there's still some credibility behind HarperCollins, Wiley, McGraw-Hill, Penguin Portfolio, whatever. And it does technically save you about $15,000 of production costs. If you were to do all of this yourself, the book cover design, the interior layout, the ghostwriting, the editing, the line editing, the copy editing, the pre-production, um, all, uh, all of the specialists that you have to pay, if you do a good job, it's going to be at least $15,000. We're going to do a little ingredient breakdown later of what to expect to pay if you're doing self-publishing today. 15 k is low. I wanted to put 25 k in there, but some of y'all are cheap, and you're going to do it the cheap way. Even the cheap way is literally 10 or 15 k if you add up all the ingredients and all the building blocks that I'm going to share with you. Tiny profit margin on the actual books. What are the pluses? Big plus number one, distribution. That's done for you. You don't need to worry about that. Major media reviews. A lot of major media, online, offline, TV, radio, print, web, blog, whatever, will not review self-published books. They just won't. Because now with the advent of AI, there are garbage books being written, I don't know, 10,000 a day. I'm just going to make up a number. That asterisk, that is a fictional statistic. It's probably low, actually. But there are there is garbage being cranked out by the boatload. And so nobody wants to touch a self-published book, especially not today in the age of AI. Major media is out. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. If that's important to you, you should know this. Big plus number three is foreign rights. If you care, if you care, if you don't care, no problem. For my first two books, the, these things were important to me. So the Do It Marketing book, Russian translation, Portuguese translation, Arabic translation. Actually, it's two versions of Chinese. You linguist people know what the two versions of Chinese are. I don't, but I guess one is literal and one is with the characters. Uh, if it works like Japanese. And then the one that's missing is Thai. I could not find an online image of, I have, I have the book on my shelf, the Thai translation. I'm very big in Thailand, huge. I'm like Jerry Lewis in France. It's amazing. It's amazing. So that was important to me. And so, <laughs> you know, people, I had a guy, I think it's from Saudi Arabia, that asked, he asked me to, send him a, uh, what's it called when you, um, the things that you sign, oh, a, 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 a book plate, a book plate, a little card that you peel off the back, you stick it in the front of the book and you can autograph books long distance that way. He said, could you please send me a signed book plate that I can put into my book? And I said, well, only problem is it's gonna be in English because I don't speak Arabic, is that okay? He said, it's absolutely fine. So I signed the book. I put that in an envelope. We did the airmail. Remember airmail? Whatever it was. I guess it was priority something uh, international. And I sent it over to him. So yeah, I'm also very big in Saudi Arabia. Huge. Very important. All right.
Let's go to the other side of the house, which is self-publishing. Self-publishing, the huge advantage of their speed and complete control. Expensive to produce, but big, big profit margin. You might make a dollar on a self-published book. I'm sorry, you might make a dollar on a traditionally published book. When it sells, very common to make $10 on a self-published book. So if your plan is to sell a lot of books, do you want to make a buck a book or 10 bucks a book? It, it makes a difference. Big minus number one, no distribution baked in. Big minus number two, no major. And when I say distribution, I mean sitting on the shelf in bookstores, airports, all that jazz. Big minus number two is no major media reviews. So we said that with traditional, you get major media reviews. And there's no foreign rights because you don't tap into a publishing house's foreign rights department. I will also tell you, can you buy or invest uh, and fix minus number one? Can you buy distribution if you want to? You absolutely can. Unfortunately, you can't buy major media reviews, but maybe you say, hey, I don't need major media reviews. I want niche industry reviews. And if my book is any good, I got some contacts. They will read it. They will review it. And a niche review might be worth more to you than a review in Good Housekeeping or Inc. or Fast Company or the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or USA Today. But you're not getting those major media reviews with a self-published book. And then foreign rights, you can also hire someone to pitch your book to foreign publishers. So two out of the three minuses you can fix with money. There's a lot of minuses that you can fix with money. Uh, unfortunately, we can't pay off people at the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or USA Today to review your self-published book. So let's talk about some writing shortcuts and tools and tactics because writing the book is the key. My mantra on this, you want to write this down, write short, market hard. People don't have attention spans. The best-selling books of the last 20 or 25 years, the best-selling business books that have sold many, many, many millions of copies. Many of them you will recognize, many of them you have read, and many of them are short. So who moved my cheese? 10 million copies. It's 96 pages all in. The Fish Philosophy sold 4 million copies. It's 107 pages. The One Minute Manager, and all the series that came from all of these. Uh, but this one, the initial book, the big mega hit, 9 million copies sold. It's 111 pages. So this is what works today. My friend Phil Jones sold over a, over a million copies of exactly what to say. It's an amazingly powerful, fantastic book. If you haven't bought it, buy it now. Just go to another tab, open up amazon.com, Type in exactly what to say and get yourself a copy of this great book. It's 130 pages, big margins, lots of white space, pull quotes on facing pages. It's got beautiful typography and design because it gets attention. So your book, the book that you're planning to write, should not be a 300-page wall of text megatome that no one's going to read because you will not get business from a book they do not finish. You will not get business from a book they do not finish. Write that down somewhere. So the mantra, write short, market hard, you wanna write a book that is easy to read, easy to write, easy to buy, because it's appealing and sexy and interesting looking, easy to buy in bulk, meaning small five by seven paperback format and bold design. When you open up 99 out of 100 business books, you're gonna be faced with a boring wall of text. When you open up Sally Hogshead's book, this book right here, this book is called Radical Careering and it's exactly in the format that I recommend and that we help clients today to produce. 99 boring wall of text business books. You literally open up to any random page. You see something like that. This differentiates the top 
for those of you that are in the speaking, training, seminar, workshop business, when you go to a workshop and you walk in the door, you walk in the door and you see just a row of chairs set up in a straight line, a binder and a pencil is set out in front of every seat. You're like, oh, okay, this will be another boring workshop. When you walk in, and maybe some of you do trainings and seminars like this, you walk in and there's streamers and there's toys on the tables and the chairs are arranged in pods and there is a workbook and Play-Doh and toys and um, you know colorful post-it notes in different colors and shapes and there's whiteboards all around the room. You walk in and you're like, okay, this is gonna be different. This is gonna be fun. This might even be interesting. The, the format of the book, just like the format of that workshop, either screams out, this is gonna be like every other experience you've ever had in this category, or it's gonna be in the top 1%, and I cannot tell you when I've done workshops like this, people have come up to me afterwards after an eight hour grueling, whiteboarding, brainstorming, flip charting sessions, a strategic work session. They said, David, the moment I walked in here, I knew this would be great. The moment I walked in here, I knew this would be great because of the way that the physical room was set up. What was there, what wasn't there? What did it look like? What did it feel like? What emotions did it spark in them? You do the exact same thing with a book. You can open up a boring wall of text business book at a bookstore online. You click on that little button on Amazon, says read a sample, read a sample. And you can look at something like this and go, wow. Or you can open a boring wall of text business book and go, oh, very, very, very important. My recommendation here, my friends, because write short, market hard, don't write a book, write half a book. High level people don't have time to read. CEOs and top executives, they're, they're, they're not readers. They're skimmers and scanners. Write that down, high level executive prospects that you wanna put this book in their hands, they're not readers, they're skimmers and scanners. They're looking for subheads, they're looking for bullets, they're looking for color, they're looking for engagement items in your book. They're looking for bullet lists, they're looking for quizzes, they're looking for uh, some interactivity where they're thinking. They're not just reading, your book is helping them to think. Huge difference. Books that people read get put back on the shelf. Books that make prospects and readers think generate phone calls and emails. How can we bring you in? How can we work with you? Can you come speak at our leadership meeting? Can we buy a thousand copies of your book? The book should be able to be finished on an airplane ride from New York to Chicago, which is two hours and 13 minutes in case you haven't made that trip lately. You will not get hired from a book they don't finish, and small books have a huge impact, especially the kind that we recommend and help our clients to create. So if you have not yet started, the easiest way to get a book going is go to your Google Docs, go to a Word document, and simply go File New. At the top of that document, type in the book, and then you're gonna start to collate, collect, curate, brainstorm, copy in, blogs, notes, presentations, all kinds of things that are raw material for your book. And then you're gonna start to work that material. You're gonna start to put the ingredients into the kitchen, and then you're gonna start cooking. So let's talk about what these shortcuts and what this cooking process looks like. You're gonna collect, curate, and compile any related content. You're gonna write down, and you don't have to write anything really when you're first collecting, just write down short phrases, bullets, keywords around the principles that you wanna share in the book, the practices that you believe in, 
the insights and the action steps. So we're collecting blurbs, we're collecting little fortune cookies at this point. We're gonna also collect pieces of motivation and inspiration to do what you're telling them to do when it comes to your topic. You're gonna share in this document some you-isms, some things that you're famous for saying, some quotes and some mantras and some uh, phrases that your clients quote back to you regularly, regularly. It's your collection of greatest hits. And you're gonna also put in some of your manifesto, what you believe, what's right with the world, what's wrong with the world, what are some myths and truths, what are some um, limiting beliefs or false beliefs or missteps that people make. You're gonna put in your recommendations, you're gonna put in your advice, you're gonna put in what you learned, how you learned it, where you learned it, stories, metaphors, analogies, and examples, all of which relate to the topic and the subject matter of your book. And this is gonna be raw. It's gonna be raw, it's gonna be uncooked. All we're doing is we're getting the ingredients out of your head and onto the kitchen counter. And they're to be developed and built and written and uh, um, uh, expanded later. But right now, we just got to collect the raw building blocks. Second step, organize, select, and sequence. We've got all the stuff out of the kitchen table. Some of it is going to be good to go as is. You wrote an amazing blog last week. That blog should probably go in your book that you're writing today. You wrote something 10 years ago, might not be relevant. Maybe we throw that ingredient out. Maybe it needs updating. Good idea, outdated reference, outdated context. It's a keeper, but I need to update it. So I'm gonna organize and select from the assembled raw ingredients. Then I'm gonna to start to figure out a sequence. I'm gonna to start to figure out a table of contents or a chapter structure or a chapter skeleton that makes sense. Here's where people screw this up, by the way. They try and do the organizing before they do the collecting. It's, it's crippling, it's crippling. The collecting is easy. The collecting is copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Copy and paste your heart out. Copy and paste your brains out. Some of that stuff's never gonna see the light of day. Some of that stuff's gonna be on the cutting room floor. It's okay, it's fine. But get the, get the ingredients on the kitchen table. Then that second step, is where we start to say what stays, what goes, what needs to be updated, what's good to go as is. And then what's the organizing principle of the book? What are the chapters or the micro chapters? What are the sections and the subsections that make sense given that I have this list of raw ingredients that I, I can now see, I can reference, I can look at, I can start to copy and paste, I can start to make post-it notes or index cards for each one then I can start a mind map process. Whatever process works for you, flip chart, whiteboard, notebook, doesn't matter. This is what it looks like on a whiteboard, and this is what it looks like with micro post-it notes in a notebook. So whatever method works for you, you can color code, you can organize. The nice thing is it's portable. You can move an idea from section one to section four. You can move a story from section three to section 10. You can move an analogy from section seven back to section five, because you realize that you talk about it in section six. And it, it doesn't make sense not to talk about it before you expand on it. Then you're gonna supplement with three additional sources. Number one, what is hiding on your hard drive? Long forgotten, but probably brilliant. What is in your bookshelf or file cabinet? Old seminar notes, old course binders, old PowerPoints, old speaker notes, lecture notes, seminar notes, raw material in hard copy format that might not be anywhere on your computer. And then what relevant to this topic and this subject is between your ears and you've never written about? or spoken about, or presented on, or been interviewed about. So get those out on paper as well. The great news is you can get going now. I mentioned Sally Hogshead a moment ago. She also has a fantastic quote. 
about the impact of writing a book. Writing a book is like pointing an aircraft carrier in a certain direction. Everything goes with it. Meaning the aircraft carrier never sails alone. It's got destroyers, it's got troop ships, it's got supply ships, it's got submarines. By the way, there's two nuclear submarines on each side of this. You can see the one on the right has this wake, the underwater wake. So there are there's major, major, major weaponry that goes with an aircraft carrier. When the aircraft carrier starts to make a 45 degree turn, everyone else makes a 45 degree turn. The battleships, the destroyers, the troop ships, the supply ships, the submarines, right? Think of your book like the aircraft carrier and everything in your business is gonna go with it. That's how to start thinking about this integration concept. So let's move on. Monetizing your book and your author platform. This goes way beyond book sales. Way beyond book sales. I'm gonna give you 12 things to start thinking about. Workbooks, manuals, guides, just like we took a $20 book, which is get the job you want even when no one's hiring, and we transformed it into the $197 ultimate career guide, workbook, companion tools, worksheets, forms, templates, audio, guidance, yes, on CDs. It was 2007. You get the idea. Mini books from my friend David Side at minibook.com. Imagine publishing a series of two or three mini books even before your main book comes out to build momentum. A lot of people do this backwards. They've got the 300 page boring wall of text business book. And then they say, well, let me make a mini book out of that. You should have done a mini book six months ago or 12 months ago to promote the big book. So minibook.com, check into that if you haven't seen that before. Keynote speaking, training workshops we talked about, consulting, coaching programs, bulk book sales to corporations. Almost no one thinks about this. There are New York Times bestsellers that you've never heard of and that never made the list. What do I mean by that? New York Times bestseller, you have to sell a certain quantity of books over a certain period of time in certain bookstores in New York City somewhere between 10 and 12,000 books over the course of a seven day period. A lot of people buy their way onto that list. So they have an author's discount. Their book is $20. The author discount takes it down to 10. They buy 10,000 books. That's right, that's $100,000. And then they pay some company to put in quote unquote orders at these right, bricks and mortar bookstores so that they then put those books into those bookstores they put the orders through those bookstores through those channels to sell the number of books so yes sorry victoria there is no santa claus and the new york times bestseller including number one bestseller system can be rigged um it's very expensive it's very expensive and I personally think it's very stupid, but people do it. When I say there are New York Times bestsellers that you've never heard of and have never made the list, if my client is IBM and I have an entire division of IBM that I've done some training or speaking or workshops for, and my book comes out and they would like to buy 5,000 copies, and then another client wants to buy 7,000 copies, and another client wants to buy 2,500 copies, those three clients, those three bulk book sales, now put me in New York Times bestseller number range. It will never be a New York Times bestseller, just to be clear. You can't say that. You can't claim that. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that you can sell more books than a New York Times bestseller sells with the power of bulk book sales. Do not sell books one at a time. Yes, you will sell some books one at a time. You can't help that. But you wanna sell hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of books? 
the much easier, much faster, much more profitable way to do that is bulk book sales to corporations, associations, and other entities. So membership sites, mentoring programs, VIP days, sponsorships, licensing and certification programs, all of these can be, and again, you don't have to use all of them, but I would look at this list and I would say, which two or three, which two or three make sense for me? All 12 do not make sense for any of y'all. All 12 do not make sense for, for me, for you, for no one. You start doing all 12 of these, your head's gonna explode. But which two or three could be major revenue multipliers in your business right now? Which two or three appeal to you? Which two or three are you already doing some version of? And it would be very easy to integrate into your upcoming book strategy and think about which two or three have your name on it. So this is, this is the angry lady from the beginning, right? You should write a book. You should write a book. Now you know why. Now you know, so, well, I'm not going to write an, a book because the angry lady is pointing her index finger and poking my chest. I'm going to write a book because I'm going to integrate it into my business, and it's going to be a different kind of book easy to write, easy to read, easy to buy, easy to buy in bulk, easy to recommend and refer, visually striking, beautiful design, typography, layout, top 1%. I knew this would be awesome the moment I flipped through the book. Just like I knew this seminar would be amazing the moment I walked in the room. The expectation is now set on a different level. So the huge payday is alignment. I promise you the example, here's the example. Yes, you can buy my Do It Marketing book for 20 bucks, but you know what else you can buy? You can buy online coaching for $3,000. You can buy a two-day retreat for $10,000. You can buy a private VIP day for $15,000. You can buy a year-long mentorship program for $24,000. You can become a certified consultant for $30,000, or you can join our MBA Elite Mastermind for $48,000. So am I excited about selling $20 books? Eh, not really. Have I sold a crap ton of $20 books? Yes. Have I sold some $20 books in bulk? Yes. Have I sold a lot of private VIP days? Because people said, David, I read your book. I know you can help me. Can we get together for a day? Sure. David, I, I need to connect with you on an ongoing basis, you and your team. I need to figure out a whole mentorship relationship with you. What does that look like? How do I get in? When's your next one start? 2K a month. We have people in there. And I've done, I put 24K. We have people in their third and fourth and fifth continuous year of mentorship. So take that mentor program, 24K, multiply it by a three or a four or a five, a single client. So this also is helpful for you. What is your client lifetime value now? And what would your client lifetime value be? What would your potential client lifetime value be if you had this sort of deeply integrated alignment with everything that you're doing, not only with your book and books, but with your business? and your services and your programs and your offers. So this is where the money is, my friends. The book is the beginning, it's not the end. Write that down somewhere. The book is the beginning, it is not the end. If you wanna make tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or in our case, millions and millions and millions of dollars just in the last six years, because of the thought leadership, the authority, the magnetism, and the power of having a published book in the right hands of the right people who are gonna want to work with you. And they're gonna wanna go way beyond a $20 book. Trust me, they're gonna go way beyond a $20 book. So my warning, we do not want to write a same old lame -old wall of text business book, no more boring business books, no more wall of text, snooze fests. Do you judge a book by its cover? I think you agree that we do. How about judging it by every single page? 
So this is from inside the Do It Selling book. These are section headers. This is the design, the typography, the layout, the font, the spacing, all of this matters. Sales Conversation Mastery is section 13, micro chapters 43, right? Visual, bold, bullets, headlines, subheads, lists. CEOs, and I include small business owners, medium-sized business owners, founders, entrepreneurs, y'all don't read. You're the most ADHD, crazy, wackadoodle crowd. How do I know that? Because I'm one of y'all. I am one of y'all. You don't read. I don't read. You don't have time to read. What do we do? We skim, we scan, and we absorb from skimming and scanning. We are not detailed readers. Computer analysts are detailed readers. Librarians are detailed readers. The people that you want to sell to are not detailed readers. The high-level executives that are making decisions on 10 to 100 to $500,000 consulting, coaching, training contracts, they're not, they're not detailed people. They are high-level, big-picture, C-suite thinkers. They're skimmers and scanners. They need subheads, bullets, lists, graphics, visuals. If this is going to be a book that they have any chance of finishing, it needs to be this kind of book. So I want you to think about this. Every book is designed, every single one. Every single book is designed. This book is designed and this book is designed. Which one is more compelling? Which one is more engaging? Which one is more exciting? Which one gets your spidey senses vibrating with anticipation? Every book is designed. You can design it awesome, visual, catchy, snappy, striking, beautiful, or you can design it like this page on the right. Let me perhaps take us to a different realm. I'm gonna take us to a different realm. I wanna talk about style. I wanna talk about style, talk about design, talk about first impressions. Are you ready for this? Type in ready in the question box. If you're ready for a little, we're going a little, into a little wacky town here. We're going into wacky town. I'm going to invite you to come with me to wacky town. Type in ready in the question box if you are ready for wacky town. Justice Clarence Thomas. He's got a personal style. Someone dresses this guy in the morning. Someone does. Don't know who, but someone does. That's have a look. Clarence Thomas, that's one choice. Your business book could be Clarence Thomas. My business books are Snoop. Which one is more compelling? Which one is more engaging? Which one would you want to have a beer with? I'm not even sure if Justice Thomas here is awake. His eyes might be open. He could be snoring. I don't know. Boring, boring, boring. The 1964 Jaguar E-Type. That car was designed. That car was designed. Many car enthusiasts call that the most beautiful car that was ever made. If you see one in person, when you see one in person, it will take your breath away. It is a head turner. You can't not look at this car. The AMC Gremlin was also designed. It was. It had to be. Someone saying, hey, let's, let's put this car in the marketplace. Ugly. Both cars were designed. Both designers got paid. This is how the world works, my friends. This is the Berkshire Hathaway website. I don't know if you know this or not, but the Berkshire Hathaway website is but ugly. It looks like the AOL homepage from 1994. If you go to berkshirehathaway.com right now, this is what you will see. It's no joke, and its competition is the Carlisle Group, whose website looks like this. Both websites were designed. Now, Berkshire Hathaway, obviously very successful. You go to this website, first question you're thinking is, oh my God, was, was Berkshire Hathaway hacked? Is, why does it look so ugly? Why does it look like AOL.com in 1994? 
that can't possibly be their main corporate website. It is. It is. Someone designed it. And then someone designed the Carlisle website also, carlisle.com. So I want you to think design equals excitement and emotion. When you open a book like this, you haven't even read a word. Design and the design credibility says, wow, this person knows what they're talking about. This person's going to have some cool things to say. This is not going to be like every other business book I've ever read. There's going to be some cool ideas. There's going to be some things that are going to be engaging, exciting that I can use in here. Design is excitement and emotion. This book was also designed. Lack of design clearly broadcasts sameness and boredom. Sameness and boredom. Wall of text business book, 99.9% .9 of nonfiction business books look like this. Ooh, look, there's a shaded box. Wow. I see a couple subheads. That's exciting. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Had to wake up in the middle of the master class. Boring. But this is work. This looks like work. This looks like it took work to write, and it did, like seven years. This is good to great, by the way, Jim Collins. And it took it takes a lot of work to read this book. The this particular book, not to pick on poor Jim Collins. This is probably the most purchased business book of the last 50 years and the least read, the least read. If you tried to read this book, it is heavy going, man. It is dense. This guy is not an engaging writer and the lack of design, the wall of text, standard business book format, not helping, not helping. So my friends, what's this all about? It's about helping more people. It's about building your legacy, building your impact. It's about building preeminence with your next book, higher levels of respect and industry recognition, which they will not get from a book they do not finish, turning readers into clients and getting new ones, showcasing your best ideas to make sales easier, and again, being of greater service, being more helpful, being more useful, putting vital strategies, tactics, methodology, training, and tools into the hands of the people that you know you can help and that you know can and will want to hire you after engaging with your ideas. So why you showed up today? You're tired of hearing that same old finger in the chest woman. You should write a book, you should write a book, you should write a book, but you don't know where to begin. And when you do begin, it seems like this exhausting Herculean task. You want to impact more people, grow and scale your business, grow and scale your thought leadership, and stop being a best kept secret. You write a book like everyone else writes a book, it's not going to get attention. It's not going to get reviews. It's not going to get, it's not going to be remarkable. It's not going to be interesting. It's not going to be compelling. Third reason, deep down in your entrepreneurial heart, just like I do, you know that publishing a book, not just any kind of book, but this kind of book, is the key to better clients, bigger deals, and higher fees. So you got a choice right now, my friends. The information that we shared by itself is not going to cut it. You know that. I know that. We all know that. It's called the knowing-doing gap. You can do it slowly using trial and error and some of what I shared today, or you can do it fast because we are launching. I need a drum roll for this, so please type drum roll into the question box. I need a drum roll. I'm going to do it with you on my desk, but just type in drum roll if you're excited and tingly with anticipation, like I'm excited and tingly with anticipation to share this with you. So drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Awesome. Thank you. We are launching a publishing division. We are launching an amazing, fantastic new division of our company called CEO Think Books. I told you earlier, if you give people information in a book, that is sort of a commodity at this point. Certainly with ChatGPT, all the AI, 
I can crank out a fantastic book in about 20 minutes. It's filled with information. When you make a CEO think, like literally stop them in their tracks, think and rethink their problem. Now they're engaged. Now they're excited. They're not going to finish the book and put it back on the shelf. They're going to finish the book and they're going to call you. They're going to go to the QR code that's in the back of the book. They're going to go to the contact page on your website, on your author website. They're going to email. They're going to call. They're going to hit you on LinkedIn and say, I just finished your book. We need to talk. I just finished your book. We need to talk. That's the premise of writing a CEO think book. So we've had lots of successful author clients. Some of them have written a book in this format. So the amazing Annie Schiffman, Simple Social Media, Nelson, who is here and has a fantastic book in the format we recommend called The Creative Storm, whole bunch of other great authors that came to us for various other aspects of book publishing, marketing, or promotion. And here's why I'm doing this. After writing three internationally best-selling business books, there's their cute little faces right there, translated into six languages, and having sold tens of thousands of copies and generated over $10 million of professional services revenue because of those books over the past six years, I'm being asked more and more to help ambitious executives and successful founders and owners of established professional services firms for help in writing their book, but not just any book, this kind of book. This kind of book is short, impactful, and I'm gonna use the word sexy. It is a sexy ass book that we're talking about. Not boring, not vanilla, looks like, unlike 99% of the business books that are out there. But the business books that are selling, that are being read, that are being reviewed, that are being passed along, just like I said to you, I said, I showed you those six books. And I said, the one I want you to buy, the one I want you to buy is exactly what to say. Exactly what to say is this format of a book. Its content is amazing. Its format and design is memorable. It is the full package. It is the full package. Exactly what to say by my buddy, Phil M. Jones is a perfect example of this kind of short, impactful, and yes, sexy book. If you know Phil, Phil's pretty sexy too, but we're not gonna go there. So what you get when you write this kind of book, yes, you get thought leadership, establishes you as an expert in your field, enhancing your professional reputation and credibility, building your personal and company brand, leading to increased business opportunities, easier sales, after they've read your book, and premium price positioning, very important. I've had people double and triple their fee structure once their book has come out and gotten some traction. Platform building opens doors to all the things that you might find a little bit challenging right now, like getting a five or a 10K keynote speaking gig, serving on industry panels, getting media appearances, traditional media, online media, offline media, podcast guesting, and becoming a trusted industry voice, not just for your clients, but for the industry that you serve. Yes, legacy creation. You and your ideas will earn wider recognition when they're in more people's hands, make a greater impact, and perhaps spark a global movement. New business development, which is where I've had tremendous success, both for myself and for our clients, Attracting new prospects, clients, partners, or investors who resonate with your vision, philosophy, and ideas that they read about in your book. And final one, competitive advantage, true differentiation differentiates you and your firm from competitors who haven't published and probably never will. And even when they do, it's going to be another boring wall of text business book. Unless you happen to tell them about CEO think books. And if they're not a competitor, we'd love to help them too. We're not going to help any of your competitors that we want to help you. So here is, if you haven't shopped around for this kind of thing, 
here's the investment level with the other guys. And you can look at the websites. You can, this is all public information. Scribe, which used to be called Book in a Box, founded by Tucker Max. Advantage Media, which now has a partnership with Forbes, and now they go by Forbes Books. And then Greenleaf. Greenleaf is a standalone publisher. My buddy Clint Greenleaf sold that maybe about seven or eight years ago. And now they have an imprint with, I believe it's Fast Company and Inc. So Inc. Books are Greenleaf on the back end and Fast Company Book Publishing is Greenleaf on the back end. They include all the same stuff, ghostwriting, editing, cover design, interior layout, book production, boring wall of textbook, boring wall of textbook, boring wall of textbook. Scribe is the fastest, four to eight months, depending on how much help you need from them. Uh, Advantage, Forbes, uh, Greenleaf, um, what did I say? Fast Company and Inc., which are all Greenleaf in disguise, six to 12 months. And all of these are a six-figure investment, multi-six-figure investment in some cases, depending what you buy, how you buy it, et cetera. So literally $135,000. Uh, that is on their website. That is, that's their basic package. That's their basic package. You can pay them more, but $135,000 for this complete done for you experience. Advantage Forbes, you could spend up to a quarter million dollars for complete done for you plus all the extras. Greenleaf, easy to spend over 200K uh, with all the extras. But you're not getting away with anything here for less than the very high five figures, like 80 grand, 100 grand at a minimum. Let's talk about doing it yourself. I put here, do it yourself. I put an R. It's do it right. Please do it right. You can do it right on the cheap and you can do it right high end, but whatever you do, don't cut corners. This is such an anchor piece of your thought leadership content that cutting corners on your book is just stupid. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again. Cutting corners on your book, whether it's the ghostwriting, the editing, do-it-yourself covers. Remember, I, I was the extreme self-publishing guy. And I'm telling you, doing it right on the cheap is a stupid, stupid, costly mistake. So doing it right yourself, ghostwriting, developmental editor, copy editor, proofreader, interior layout, graphic design, cover design, ebook conversion, 100 printed books, on the low end, you're spending 24,000 bucks of your own money. On the high end, you're spending north of 80,000 bucks of your own money. And you're also sort of the general contractor, right? So you need to know who's a good ghostwriter, what makes a good developmental editor, who do I trust with my interior layout and design, who's going to give me good graphic design for both the cover, the back cover, the spine, and most importantly, the interior of the book. You can go cheap, you can go Fiverr, you can spend 300 bucks, or you can go to a professional graphic designer and pay five, six, 7,000, up to you. Same with your cover. People are doing AI generated covers that look horrendous, by the way, and have misspellings. And uh, they're going with it. It's like, yeah, it was free. Yeah, chat GPT. I used Claude, I used this one, I used that one. No, don't be stupid. So here's how it works, my friends. In our world, it's all of the above plus, plus, plus. This is a complete done for you system. We do an onboarding intake call, depending on your content, depending how many assets we collect from you. Because remember, there's the collect, collate, curate, put everything on the kitchen table. We're going to have three to four 60 minute interviews with you. If this is complete done for you ghostwriting, it's easy to pay a ghostwriter on the low end, 15 or $20,000 and over a quarter million dollars on the high end. There's the ghostwriter who was featured on Shark Tank. This was about 10 years ago. He charges $250,000 just for the ghostwriting. No book production, no design, nothing. Just I, I will write your book. It's a quarter million dollars. Okay, great. That's nice. I'm not paying a quarter million dollars to have some guy write the book. Professional grade editing, 
book cover design, interior layout, full color, like you see in the examples here, Kindle ebook layout and design, which is a whole separate animal, very tricky. Uh, your print book can look really ugly with a bad Kindle conversion. You've seen those. Book distribution through all the online channels, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, ev everywhere fine books are sold, hard copy and digital. Complete book marketing plan and assets. 30 days of post-launch guidance. That's personally with me. Unlimited consulting via email. Again, personally with me. And 100 beautifully designed, good quality paper, full color, amazing looking, sexy little books. 100 paperback copies included. So that is how we do it. That is how we do it. I'm not offering you any of that right now. What I'm offering you is a book roadmap VIP day. The book, and I ordinarily get $15,000 for the VIP days, but we're not doing that in this case. In the book roadmap VIP day, you can fly to me in Philadelphia, or we can do it on Zoom if you prefer. We're gonna map out your entire book as a business strategy before a single word is written. We talked about that, very important. We're gonna do a deep dive interview during our day together to extract and collect on the kitchen table all the gold nuggets, all the euisms, all the practices, principles, ideas, uh, myths, truths, false beliefs, uh, mantras, manifesto points, all of those gold nuggets from your head. We're gonna develop a complete collection of the micro chapters, sound bites, euisms. We talked about that. So collect first, organize second. We're gonna do that together. We're gonna do a lot of work on positioning and branding and differentiation, not just for your book, but for your business that supports the book. We're gonna develop a list of potential book endorsers, book contributors or interviewees and launch partners. Some of those might come from my personal Rolodex, people that I know that would happily endorse your book or help you launch your book to their email list of 50,000, 100,000, 300,000 people. You're gonna leave with a clear plan for do it yourself, do it right yourself, or after the VIP day, you can apply 100% of your investment to work with us in any of our publishing packages, of which there are two. So we either do the book roadmap VIP day, send you off on your way, you are packaged, positioned, prepped for success, or you come back to us to the, for the full done for you service and we apply 100% of your VIP day investment towards your publishing project. So this is happening at the Marion Cricket Club in beautiful Haverford, Pennsylvania, if you wanna join us. My partner in crime and our COO, Charlie Posnack, is a member of this club. And we've had many client events and other boardroom type events at this uh, amazing facility. So this is the boardroom where we'll be sitting in the lower right. We're gonna have uh, probably breakfast uh, by the pool if we do this in the next month or so. We're gonna have a nice lunch in the dining room on the veranda there with the uh, hanging plants and the cricket lawn in front of us. And we're gonna have an amazing time putting all this together for you. So that's where it's happening if you choose to fly to me here in Philadelphia, or we can do it in Zoom. We can do it virtual, we can do it online. That's between a six and a half and a seven hour day, just so you can estimate, approximate what that would be doing it on Zoom. Obviously, we would have a little bit more time in person, the lunches, the dinners, all that jazz. So if you were to do all of this yourself, I want you to calculate your hourly rate. No one's hourly rate on this call should be less than $100. This takes 500 hours start to finish if you do everything yourself. You can hire a kitchen contractor and in eight or 16 weeks be looking at the kitchen you see on the left, or you can start where you are now and be the guy on the right. Either way, you're 500 hours away from that kitchen. If your hourly rate is $100, that is $50,000 of your time. 
If your hourly rate is $150, or if you value your time at $150, now it's $75,000 of your time. So obviously, we're not going to sell the VIP day for $75,000. We're not going to sell the VIP day for $50,000. Here's what we're going to do. This is our entire program. I ordinarily sell the VIP day for 15K. For you right here, right now on this masterclass, it is nine. I am not shy about the investment for level two and level three. Level two is the complete done for you book development and writing, and that is 29K. The entire done for you start to finish full enchilada, book writing, book publishing, book marketing is 51K. When you enroll in the VIP day for 9K, we would apply that 9K to the 29 if you want to come back to us for that, or we would apply the 9K to the 51 if you want to come back to us for that. Either way is good. If you choose not to work with us and just go either general contract it yourself or work with one of the other resources that I shared with you, the VIP day will put you miles and miles ahead. You will have between 80 and 95% of the preparation work done. Uh, all that you would need is the writing and the fleshing out. So uh, that's the VIP day situation. I have good and bad news. The good news is we will take that 3K and split it into three payments. That's the good news. So it's 3K right now, and then two additional installments of 3K. So we can spread that out nice and easy. That's the good news. The bad news is I only have three spots. So it's three installments, 3K, 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 over the next three months, and I only have three spots. The reason I have three spots, number one, my schedule is bananas, but number two, we only have three spots on the production side to do the books between now and December. So if you want to get going on this now, I'm assuming one or two people will upgrade to either the 29K package or the 51K package. Again, you don't have to. There's no pressure, there's no pitch, there's no weirdness. If you decide to do it yourself, it's all good. But three payments, that's the good news, three times three. And bad news is I only have three, I only have bandwidth and the team only has bandwidth for three books between now and the end of the year. So if you are ready now, here's a URL. Rachel's gonna drop that into the chat. You can hop over to doitmarketing.com slash VIP, and you will see it's 3K today, and then the additional payments on a monthly basis, three monthly installments of 3K, 3K, 3K. I will get in touch with you within 24 hours. We'll book your pre-VIP day planning call. So that'll be a Zoom call, about 45 minutes, where we talk about your book, your goals, what you have already assembled, what might be on your bookshelf, what might be on your hard drive. I'm gonna ask you to do a little very quick intake and send me some of those goodies so I can look at them and prepare for our day together. Then we'll look at our calendars and choose a date. I will send you some pre-planning materials about your book, your business, your strategy, how you're gonna integrate the new book and the methodology training and tools that we talk about into your business so that you generate hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of dollars from the book, not just be selling $20 books. And we're gonna have an amazing time, either at the Marion Cricket Club here in our backyard or via Zoom, mapping out your evil plans for global domination with your book and with your business, more importantly, with your book and your business. Now, you might say, hey, this looks great, but you know, I'd like to have a little conversation first, maybe see if this makes sense. Totally cool. Go to doitmarketing.com forward slash talk. And again, Rachel, please pop that into the chat so, so people see that. Uh, we will get together. We'll just choose a day and time that goes directly to my personal private calendar. Uh, we'll talk about your book ideas. We'll talk about whether your topic and content fits this kind of CEO think book the exact kind of writing, design, publishing, and marketing support you'll need, whether you go with us or anyone else. 
And then we'll also obviously answer your questions about the VIP day experience and make sure it's a great fit in both directions. So for the folks that are ready, and again, I only have three of these right now, go to doitmarketing.com slash VIP. That's the URL there at the bottom. If you'd like to have a little exploratory chat with me, go to doitmarketing.com forward slash talk. And uh, make sure to put, uh, put VIP day chat in the memo field. So I know, because I, I do other calls, I do enrollment calls, I do other type of um, sales activity on that line. And uh, it'll be good to know that you're coming from this experience and that we're talking about your possible VIP day. So please do, if you go to doitmarketing.com slash talk, please do just put in, you know, VIP day chat. So I know that that is the subject matter of what we're talking about. So I'm going to take some questions here in a moment, but this is about mapping out your entire book as a business strategy. Again, in Philadelphia, beautiful suburban Marion Cricket Club or Zoom, if you prefer, if you don't want to travel. Deep dive interview to extract your gold nuggets. We're going to collect, curate your micro chapters, sound bites, and euisms. We're going to do the positioning and differentiation work, not just for your book, but for the entire business, so that it's distinct, it's branded, it is ready to go, it is different, unique, valuable, cuts through the noise. We're going to build out your list of endorsers, contributors, launch partners, including some potentially from my personal Rolodex and personal connections. And you will leave this day, whether it's in person or on Zoom, with a clear plan for doing it yourself and or the ability to apply 100% credit of that 9K to one of our two publishing packages. If you want just the done for you writing, we'll apply it to that. If you want the full enchilada, done for you, white glove, concierge level, CEO level done for you. Everything is taken care of. Uh, all we need really is three or four hours of your time and uh, some back and forth by email as the book starts to take shape and everything else is taken care of for you. So if you want to hop in on that, it is doitmarketing.com forward slash VIP to enroll three monthly installments of 3K, 3K, 3K. And if you want to talk first, it is doitmarketing.com forward slash talk. So I'm going to take a sip of water. And then please, if you have any questions, I would love to chat with you. Type those in the question box. I'm happy to stay here until I outnumber you. All right, let me actually open up the questions. And Rachel, what kind of questions are coming in here? Uh, I will look, I'm looking in the chat. I'm also looking in the question box. Clifton, you're asking, how do I get one of the three spots? Just pop right over to doitmarketing.com forward slash VIP. It's, um, I think Rachel popped that in the chat a few minutes ago. And you can also just type it in, but you can click on that link that's in the chat window, not the question box, but the chat window, doitmarketing.com forward slash VIP. All right. Oh, this is good. Do I so I, do I need to have a clear idea of what my book is going to be about? Believe it or not, the answer is no. Part of what we're doing when we're collecting, right? Collect, collate, curate, put the ingredients on the kitchen table. Obviously, it relates to some aspect, big picture, right? Some aspect of your work, some aspect of your uh, professional service that you do. But yeah, I've totally helped people just sort through the raw ingredients. And then we can look at multiple different paths or multiple different topics. And part of our day together will be sort of looking at the collected material 
and deciding on what is the best direction, what is the topic, what is the best niche, what is the best sub niche that supports the business that you want. So this is not about, you know, I haven't decided on my book. Because remember, when you say I haven't decided on my book, you're really saying I haven't decided on my business. Aircraft carrier, left turn, all the battleships and submarines and troop ships and supply ships and destroyers go with it. So if you're not sure where your business is going, well, then you're not going to be sure where your book is going. If you are sure where you'd like your business to be going, then we can take multiple paths up the mountain and figure out which, which is the best CEO think book. And here's the other thing. Uh, this is not going to be your only book. If you've already written some books, this will not be your last book. This is a very specific kind of book that is designed from the ground up to generate leads, prospects, conversations, and sales. Leads, prospects, conversations, and sales. So when you say, okay, it's my life's work, I gotta get my life's work in this book. Everything that I know has to be drained out of my brain cells. That's not the kind of book that this is, right? These are short, snappy sound bites, mantras, euisms, practices, principles. We're going to speak some truths. We're going to bust some myths. It is a very high energy, a very exciting kind of book to read. And hint, hint, for me anyway, it is a very exciting kind of book to write and to help you write. I mean, we are, we're going to be flying around the room. We're gonna be flip charting and post-it noting and going bananas. Uh, the energy and the excitement, when I work with authors in this way, the energy and the excitement is palpable. You can feel it, you can taste it, you can touch it because they're getting so excited, not just about the, the hard hitting, uh, great ideas and, and you know the, the rants and the you know it's there's this amazing sense of freedom when you really kind of say what you think and tell prospects the way that it really is and rip off the self-soothing delusions and the blindfolds that they might be under and helping them see what they cannot see on their own helping them face some uncomfortable truths helping them uh, build a better bigger brighter bolder future this is what you're doing in the book. So you're getting energized. You're getting head up. You're getting, you know, you're getting as tingly as I'm getting now in just describing it. So uh, that's a long, long answer to, do I need to know what my book is about before I sign up? You do not. That's part of the value prop. You might have been sitting on multiple book ideas for years saying, someday I'm going to write a book, someday. Uh, it's going to be either this kind of book or that kind of book, or it's going to go in this direction or that direction. The fact that you're stuck at the crossroads is why you probably haven't written a single page of this darn book. The, the reason that you're stuck is that no one sat down with you and said, listen, this is a book. It is not the book. It is not the only book. It is not the last book. This kind of book that we're talking about, the CEO Think Books, it is a lead magnet. It is a thought leadership platform builder. It is a client attraction tool. It is a client sales tool. If you write the book the right way, and we always make sure our clients write the book the right way, there are things that you say and do in the book that subconsciously, the reader is not aware of it, but it is getting them ready to buy. There are subtle psychological triggers, not to get into the woo-woo psychology of this, but it's important. There are subtle psychological triggers that we put into the text of the book that automatically starts to suggest what life would be like if the prospect or the CEO or the, the leader who's reading the book were to work with you. And so that kind of book is not the boring wall of text business book. They will never hire you from a book they do not read. They will never hire you from a book they do not finish. This is critically, critically important. So please don't think that, 
you know, the book that you thought that you had to write or were going to write, that's not being replaced. It might be being delayed because it's not going to do all these amazing things for your business that this kind of book will, but write the CEO think book next or now, and then you can get back to the, oh, I have a business memoir. I, I want to write a fable about me growing up as the poor child of shoemakers. Okay, all right. Well, you can write that book later and good for you and God bless, but I want this book to put money in your pocket now, ASAP, as soon as humanly possible. So good question there. Let me actually go back and see where we are here. All right. And I got all these screens and windows and boxes and who knows what. Oh, here's a question. I noticed on your website, on the Do It Marketing website, you push all sales to Amazon versus selling directly. Why so? Uh, Amazon is the number one source of distribution and book sales and book recommendations. Uh, Target, Walmart, kind of second, third, et cetera. But the, I decided to double down on one platform for the reviews and the recommendations. So the best place to collect and amass reviews, because you know you have 100 and whatever, 150 some reviews. I didn't want 20 on Goodreads, 25 on Barnes and Noble, 30 on Amazon, uh, 25 more on Indie Books. I wanted to concentrate. I wanted to concentrate the reviews, the credibility, the recommendation engine, possibly advertising. I'm, I'm just just now. I'm toying with a little Amazon ads, which are very easy to do, and um, kind of goose the sales with a little bit of Amazon ads. They're, they're very inexpensive and they're very easy. So that is something that I'm just exploring now. But all of those things point to Amazon for the sales, Amazon for the reviews, because it has to be a verified review to get approved more quickly. They still do unverified reviews, but they also reject quite a lot of the unverified reviews because they figure, hey, you paid some guy on Fiverr for reviews or you paid your friends to uh, review your book. And so they're really slamming down on the non-verified reviews. So all roads point to Amazon because I wanted to build up my Amazon platform, my Amazon Author Central, my Amazon Sales Rank, my Amazon Recommendation Engine. That was the reason for that. And also remember the first two books, the first two books are traditionally published. So I don't have those books, right? They got to get those books from Harper Collins. They got to get those books through Baker and Taylor or Ingram or some distributor. They got to get those books through the channels. I don't, I don't have any books here in my garage or my basement. And I, ne I never will, by the way. So uh, the CEO think books, this brings me to another unasked question, but uh, this is not about having cartons of books in your basement. This is not about having cheap print on demand flimsy books that curl up and uh, look terrible. These are offset print, professionally offset print, either in the US or Canada, depending on your price sensitivity. Canada's a little, Canada's a little bit less expensive, a little bit slower for US authors anyway. Uh, paper quality, top notch. Uh, uh, cover quality, top notch. Uh, indistinguishable in any and every physical way from a traditionally published book. So for you folks that bought Phil's book, that you bought a copy of exactly what to say, when that book arrives, I want you to feel the book. I want you to feel the cover stock. I want you to feel the paper. That is not a print on demand book. That is an offset print book. And Phil does not have books in his basement either. And he does not have books in his garage either. So think about uh, fulfillment, right? Fulfillment is important because you do not want books in your basement. You do not want a thousand books sitting in your garage. And you also don't want to be in the pack and ship business. You do not want to be in the pack and ship business. 
I have seen these Facebook ads recently, you know, sell directly to readers, blah, 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 blah. I don't recommend that. I don't recommend that. I've looked at that guy's system and I don't recommend that. So I think going through retail channels, whether it is a physical bookstore or Amazon or Barnes and Noble or whatever it is, an independent bookstore, being orderable in a physical bookstore, meaning that you're in the catalog, and um, obviously eBooks, audiobooks, all of those things are now a significant part of your sales. So there's no fulfillment on a Kindle ebook. There's no fulfillment on an audible audio download. Uh, we're selling electrons at that point. And that's, that's great. It's profitable. It's much more profitable than selling a paper book. And some people, and I've had this experience with all three of my books, that they'll buy it on Kindle or they'll buy it on Audible, start reading it or listening to it and say, David, you know what? I need to buy the hard copy because I need the underlining, the post-it notes, sticking the stickies in there, dog-earing the pages. Can't dog-ear an audio, right? Can't really, can't really underline an audio. But so you will sell multiple formats to your super fans. They will buy the hard copy book. They will buy the audio book to listen to when they're walking the dog. And they will buy the Kindle to take on the airplane. And so that is another consideration. All right, my friends. Well, fantastic hanging out with you today. What fun. I cannot wait to work with you. And uh, the VIP days, we're going to keep that open for another little bit of time. And uh, you'll get a follow-up email with the promised goodies, the replay link in case you want to go back here and hit the replay. I will also pop out the slides over to you so you have those for your reference and uh, this has been totally fantastic so much fun thank you for playing and we'll see you next time